Hey guys, so today's video is one that I have been putting off for literal months. I don't know why, I was just, I think I was just kind of overthinking it a little bit, but I decided no more of that. I figured what a better time to film it when I, it's my first sit down video in this new apartment and also Amazon Prime Day just passed, so it just feels kind of timely. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that kind of gets me a little riled up. This video might be a little sassy. We're going to be talking about the beauty communities and really just the overall influencer community's problematic relationship with Amazon. I just feel like no one is really talking about this and I, I really think it should be talked about. So I figured I'd go ahead and talk about it. So you don't need to do a whole lot of digging to find that Amazon is pretty much the most unethical e-commerce company, at least in the US right now and globally as well one of one of the worst if not the worst and i do want to just share a few stats that i found really eye opening amazon of course is known for fast shipping that is one of their main selling points a lot of items you can receive at your doorstep within 2 days of ordering them on amazon so in order to be able to provide such fast shipping the company really has to prioritize production speed. So Amazon is notorious for its tough working conditions, especially for its warehouse workers. The workplace injury rate at Amazon is twice that of the national average, even twice that of Walmart. And Walmart is not exactly known for being the most ethical company either, but the serious injury rate at Amazon is 6.8 per 100 workers, compared to 3.3 per 100 workers at non-Amazon warehouses. Amazon workers are also four times more likely to experience musculoskeletal injuries on the job, which is sprains, strains, and other repetitive stress injuries. 38,000 Amazon workers were injured on the job in 2021, which was about a 20% increase compared to the previous year. Amazon employs about a third of all warehouse workers in the US, but it's responsible for roughly half of all warehouse injuries in the US. And about 89% of those injuries, 89%, so almost all of them, were so severe that the workers either had to leave their job or were unable to perform their normal functions. All of that is just kind of a tidbit of the, the true cost of that super convenient two-day prime shipping that we all know and love, and all of that on top of many, many other problematic things that Amazon is responsible for, letting workers die in warehouses during storms, Amazon working to squash union efforts by use of police force, among many, many other things. So it's really no secret that Amazon is pretty much the worst e-commerce company here in, in the US. And while I do think we should all work to minimize our shopping on Amazon as much as humanly possible, I'm also not naive to the fact that it's pretty hard to avoid occasionally purchasing things on Amazon, especially because a lot of the time that is the most accessible place for some people, especially if you live in a rural area, maybe you don't have access to a lot of stores where you live, or people with disabilities may rely on Amazon for day-to-day -day essentials. And I definitely think there's a, a time and place to rely on Amazon for certain essentials. And I myself even occasionally do purchase things on Amazon. So I don't want to make it sound like I uh, am be and like shaming people for using Amazon for basic day-to-day -day needs. I'm more so talking about influencers' responsibility uh, in, in all of this. So that brings me to the topic of the Amazon Influencer Program, which launched in 2017. So this program allowed influencers to create their own personalized Amazon storefront where they could create a page with all of their favorite Amazon recommendations and of course earn money through it, through this storefront. And it also would allow influencers to create affiliate links where they could then earn money from their recommendations. And with this we also saw a huge rise in Amazon recommendations videos, which Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I've been watching YouTube and beauty YouTube mainly for over a decade now. I think I started watching beauty videos around 2012, and so I've been watching YouTube since before the Amazon Influencer Program began, and I don't remember seeing a whole lot of Amazon recommendations videos prior to around that 2017, 2018 time. We really started to see a lot more Amazon-focused content, especially in beauty videos, which, you know, a lot of beauty creators, myself included, kind of brand themselves as beauty and lifestyle content creators. So most of our videos are about beauty, but then maybe a handful of our videos might be more kind of lifestyle focused, like vlogs, 
around the home type things. So most beauty and lifestyle content creators weren't talking about Amazon in every other video. To me, before before it became so intertwined with the influencer community, Amazon was really just known for the place that you could buy kind of everyday essentials, things like tech items or maybe even household items that maybe weren't easy to find in stores near you, so it was kind of the convenient online place to buy those things. But it wasn't necessarily this kind of one-stop shop for clothing and jewelry and makeup and skincare and, and household stuff and tech and furniture. And like, here's a question I have. Who was buying clothing on Amazon before influencers started pro such so heavily promoting clothing on Amazon? Because in the past, if you were looking for affordable clothing, sure, you might go to Walmart or Old Navy or maybe even thrift stores, but now it's all Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. And um, I just think that's very interesting. I'm not trying to condone excessive pushing of Amazon recommendations from anyone on YouTube, but I, I even think there are some niches on YouTube on YouTube where this heavy focus on Amazon would make a little more sense, like, you know, maybe tech channels or um, home channels, parenting channels, things like that. But beauty, I just have seen this huge influx in beauty Amazon videos. And no one was buying beauty products from Amazon before the Amazon Influencer Program. I mean, maybe someone was, but it was really not a big thing to be buying makeup products from Amazon or clothing and jewelry and accessories, things that beauty creators are often also talking about in their videos. And oftentimes creators in their videos these days will make a little side note and say, oh, by the way, guys, I got this super cute shirt or these super cute earrings from Amazon. I'll link it below. And they're not just sharing that for no reason. The reason why they're sharing that is because they are going to make some money off of that. And many times they're not even really clearly disclosing their financial stake in Amazon and the fact that they are going to earn a kickback from your purchase if you do purchase from them. And what it's really started to seem like to me is that so many of these creators must just be doing so much just shopping, shopping around on Amazon, looking for more things to try out and recommend and show in videos because that directly impacts their income. And there's a reason why so many creators are hopping on the Amazon bandwagon and that is because uh, I actually, so personal anecdote here, when the Amazon Influencer Program kind of first started, I actually signed up for the program. I had about 3,000 subscribers at the time. This was a few years ago before I really knew, you know, how bad of a company Amazon was. And I made one Amazon recommendations video. And off of that video, I made $13, which I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money. But at the time, that was a lot of money for me to make off of affiliate links. At, by that point in my channel, I had maybe made $10 throughout the whole lifespan of my channel from other affiliate links outside of Amazon, like Magic Links, things like that. Those are companies that um, you can link to pretty much any website, but through just the Amazon program alone, from one recommendations video at 3,000 subscribers, I made $13, which for me that was huge at the time. So I can only imagine what huge influencers are making off of a single Amazon video each time. Not to mention all of the other just quick little mentions of Amazon products throughout their other videos. So it seems to me that the Amazon influencer program is especially competitive when it comes to the rates that they pay their influencers. So there's a reason why this is all happening. But I'm not really the type of person that just sees everything as like black and white, it needs to be this way or this way. I'm, I'm willing to see the nuance of every situation and I don't necessarily even have a problem with creators every now and then mentioning something that they got on Amazon that they liked. If it were just here and there, you know, fine, it wouldn't bother me, but it's just the fact that it has gotten so frequent and it's become clearly such a huge part of a lot of influencers uh, brand. And I can promise you these larger creators who are doing YouTube as their full-time job and they were even before the Amazon Influencer Program came to be, they were already making a cushy living without Amazon. So it's not like they're doing this out of necessity, out of needing to make a living. It's more like you're already making a living, but here's an opportunity to potentially make an extra 
few thousand dollars a year to maybe even tens of thousands of dollars a year by joining this program and talking about Amazon. I'm also not trying to position myself as like some sort of pinnacle of like ethical influencer consumerism. All of us influencers, myself included, are operating under a very imperfect and already unethical system to begin with. But if you're an influencer, especially a large influencer, and you're choosing to push your Amazon storefront and constantly promote products on Amazon for your own financial gain, you can be certain that you are causing more suffering to Amazon warehouse workers. And that's because influencers are not just responsible for their own purchases, but if an influencer is recommending an item that they purchased to their audience, they are kind of assuming responsibility for the hundreds if not thousands of people who are not going to go out and buy that product off of their recommendations. So I'll go ahead and say, like I, we recently moved into a new apartment and I did purchase a couple of things from Amazon that I wanted to make sure we had right when we got here so that, you know, like things like a litter box, um, our mattress I bought from Amazon, but I am not sharing about those things on my channel because I don't want a bunch of people to go out and buy the same thing from Amazon. I don't want to be responsible for that. Like I said before, I think occasionally shopping on Amazon is inevitable. I very, very rarely shop on there, but there are certain times where it's just the more accessible or affordable option. So that's, I mean, we all, we all understand that. But I will also say it's actually not that hard if you are really wealthy to avoid shopping on Amazon altogether. It's really not that hard. But my biggest issue with all of this is just that none of these Amazon influencers seem to ever want to acknowledge what Jeff Bezos and his company are doing to its workers, to the planet. Um, back in December when a few warehouse workers died because a tornado hit their warehouse and they weren't allowed to go home because we gotta get that two-day shipping. There's never any mention of that. How many Amazon gift guides did we see this past December right after that happened? How many of those people acknowledged what happened in that warehouse? Probably none of them. I'm not saying influencers necessarily need to be super politically outspoken about every single issue, you know, but when it's an issue that directly relates to how you're making money and another thing I was thinking about earlier is that influencers are so privileged in the sense that you can decide how you want to make money here as an influencer. You can decide what brands you want to promote and what ones you don't want to promote. You might say, well, you know, these Amazon recommendations videos might be helpful to someone who relies a lot on Amazon. Maybe they live in a rural area and a lot of their essentials they do need to buy on Amazon. Again, like I said before, it's really not, if it were just like an occasional mention here and there, that would be totally fine. But to me, it seems like influencers have changed what what we how we view Amazon altogether. So to me, like I said before, before the Amazon Influencer Program started, in the earlier days, Amazon was just this place where you could find items that maybe were hard to find elsewhere. Maybe there were things you couldn't necessarily find in a store where you live or on other websites. And it was just kind of a place where you could get essential day-to-day -day items that you needed. Now, what influencers have done is they've shifted Amazon from this convenient place to find everyday items to this place where you can do all your impulse shopping, all your frivolous spending. You can get clothes, shoes, accessories, makeup, and now they're convincing you that you some cheap, poorly made clothing is somehow worth purchasing on Amazon. These influencers could be doing all this shopping elsewhere, but they're choosing, they're choosing over and over again to do so much of their shopping on Amazon because they make all that money back and more, and a lot more. And because, thanks to influencers, Amazon is now where we can get do all of our frivolous shopping too, that has helped to shape Amazon into the behemoth that it is today. So t for influencers to pretend like they don't have social and political responsibility, they clearly do, because they have helped to shape Amazon into what it is now. Influencers' actions do make a difference, and I believe they have the responsibility to act like it. At the end of the day, while I fully believe influencers should be taking responsibility for this and just having some accountability, just a little. The reason why we see so many Amazon recommendations videos popping up on our feed is because those videos do really well. They get a lot of views, so clearly people are watching those videos. 
And so you, you could make the argument that, well, you know, they're making these videos because there's, there's a demand for them. People obviously want to see this, which is true. Influencers are going to make the videos that get more views, of course. But you also, as a creator, you don't have to make a video just because it's going to get views. Just because a video is going to get a lot of views necessarily means that you have to film those videos. You don't have to. That's a choice. There's, there are a lot of problematic top video topics that are going to get a lot of views. That doesn't mean you need to make those videos. But they're going to keep making Amazon recommendations videos if those videos keep getting a lot of views. So if this is something that bothers you as a viewer, I highly encourage you to just not click on Amazon recommendations videos or any video that has Amazon in the title. Like maybe it's a vlog and the thumbnail has this part that says, I found some new Amazon must-haves. Don't click it, just scroll on by. So I think that's about everything I wanted to say today. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about what you think about all this. What do you think about the Amazon Influencer Program? Have you noticed a shift in the amount of Amazon content that we've been seeing since about that 2017 time period? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments below. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.